Hey, what's up guys, Ace Tech here, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to put your cassette tapes on your computer. So you guys can transfer them to um, CD and even to your iPods and iPhones. So um, obviously, things you're going to need, um, a computer with a line in or a microphone port, a pre-recorded cassette tape, now here we're going to be using the uh, police, and that's the actual tape, this is empty right now. Um, you're going to need a cassette deck, or you guys can use a portable cassette player. This is a Sony Walkman, and then the cassette deck is a Sanyo. Um, now, the cables you're going to be needing. Um, if you're going to be using the portable cassette player, now, you don't have to have a Sony Walkman. Just any um, portable cassette player will do. You're going to need a male-to-male -male audio jack. You can get these from um, Radio Shack, so go check them out. Now, if you're going to be using a tape deck, because these have... Um, usually these have RCA's in the back you're gonna need an RCA so that would be the red and white cables to an audio jack so those are the things you're gonna need now we're gonna get into the program we're gonna be using alright so we're back on my laptop computer and um, we're gonna download a program called NCH WavePad Sound Editor now I found this um, program to be the, the easiest to use and the easiest to edit your files so you can get them onto your um, CDs or your iPods quickly. Now there are other programs such as um, you know Audacity. That one's a little bit more complicated and I recommend just using the WavePad software. Um, but in this review I'm just going to be showing you guys the WavePad software because that is so easy to use. So to download it, you guys are going to check in the uh, video description. I'll put the link in there. And all you're going to do is come down here to download now. Hit download now. A dialog box will pop up. And then you're just going to hit run. I already have it downloaded, so we're not going to hit run. Um, so now we're going to get into the program. And we're going to hook up our portable cassette player to the computer. All right. So earlier I told you guys you, you guys are going to need a computer with a microphone jack or a line in jack. Now most desktop computers will have both, but th most laptop computers will only have one and that will usually be the microphone jack. So what you're going to do is plug this end of your um, audio jack into your microphone jack like this. And then ha here we have our portable cassette player. We're going to plug the other end into the headphone jack of the portable cassette player. Now we're going to get into the program. Alright, we just plugged in our portable cassette player to the computer. Now we're going to open up WavePad Sound Editor. The program will open up. We're going to maximize this. I right, come down to the bottom left hand corner and hit record. Now, the dialog box will pop up in the middle of the screen. You're going to make sure this says 44,100. You're going to make sure this is stereo, not mono, stereo. And then you're going to hit OK. Now, you're going to make sure this says default playback device. Make sure this says line in, or if you plugged it into your uh, microphone port, make sure that says digital mic. Then we're going to hit record. Just make sure my portable cassette player is rewinded first. Come down here to our portable cassette player. Make sure that's rewinded. That's all the way, all the way to the beginning. It seems. So, I'm gonna hit record. All right. So, the thing you're gonna make sure is that your volume on your portable cassette player is in the middle. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle, but somewhere in the middle. You don't want it to be at max, and you don't want it to be at minimum but you want it to be in the middle somewhere so you know get it to a good point where you think it's not going to be too loud or it's not going to be too you know quiet but now that we have it um so it's you know at a good volume level we're going to hit play on our portable cassette player we're going to see that our computer is starting to receive the sound you know from the um, portable cassette player due to our mail to mail audio jack that is in the microphone port right now So to show you that that is really recording, I'm going to hit stop here, and when you're done recording, you're just going to hit the X in the corner, then you'll see that your audio file is here. So it's going to click here, and this is the um, cassette player that I just recorded. It's still playing, I'm just going to keep it playing. I'm 
you don't want to play that for too long because that's um, under copyright and I don't own this stuff. But um, that is the police. Now we're going to hit record again. I'm going to show you guys how to record this in times of um, um, volume level. Now you're not going to want this to go above zero. Um, so, you know, to make sure that it does not go above zero, you can use this slider here. Now, if you need to make it quieter, you know, you can come all the way over here and it'll make it really quiet. Um, but you, where you want it is to be where it will almost touch it, you know, and that's all right. It can touch it like once or twice, maybe. It, does, it can't go above it for too long. That's a thing. And you can't have it like this, is what I mean. So you can't have it like that. But if we come back down like this, mm, I'd say about 13 or 12 would do it. So, you know, that, that'll sound good. You know, you don't want it to be too quiet and you don't want it to be too loud. Because if you have it too loud, it'll be distorted. And actually, you'll see it when I hit the X in, the, in a little bit. But if I go like this, it'll be really, really distorted when it hit, you know, hits a pretty um, you know, good part in the music where it gets really loud. Um, as you can see, it's getting pretty loud. And you guys will see it, so... Everything's popping up. And we're going to come back down here to 13, I think I said, right? Alright, and then we're going to hit the X. Now, as you can see, um, where it got really loud, where I turned it up really loud, you guys can see where it changed. Um, this, is what, this is how you want it to look. You know, like around this point. You don't want it to look like this where it's clipping at the top. Because you won't, it will be very distorted and you won't be able to hear everything. So you want it to look like this. Um, so I'll play it in that, that position so you guys can hear that. Alright. So that's how you want it to sound. You do not want it to be very, very loud because, like I said, if you have it loud, it'll be distorted and you won't be able to hear your music. So, so you don't want it like that. You want it to be like this. You, know, you can hear every note and it's easy to, you know, tell what they're saying and tell what's, you know, happening. So... You know, that's how to record your cassettes from your portable cassette player onto your computer. Now we're going to start using a um, cassette deck, which we have sitting right here. Um, we're going to be back really soon. All right, I just showed you guys how to record um, cassette tapes from your portable cassette player. Now I'm going to show you guys how to do it from your cassette deck. Now, as you can see, this says line out. Now you're going to want to find your line out. Now this is an older cassette player, so they didn't color code them like they really should have. Um, as you can see, um, one is red and one is white. Now the white one is supposed to be your left, so we're going to plug that into left output. Sort of hard to do this with one hand, sorry guys. Probably should have used a tripod. And then you're going to plug your red into your <laughs> right. We can actually do this. Mm, it seems that's pretty stable in there. All right, I'm gonna come back over here. Like I showed you in the beginning, the the um, other end of this cable is a audio jack, so we're gonna plug this directly in the same place um, we plugged our um, portable cassette player. So we're gonna plug it into my microphone port on my laptop computer, and that's how you plug your um, cassette deck directly into your computer. So now we're gonna edit the audio file we get off of the cassette deck. Alright, so we're back in our program, NCH WavePad Sound Editor. Just like we did with the portable cassette player, we're going to come down to record. Everything should be the same if you follow the directions in the beginning of this video, so we're just going to keep hitting next. And then we're going to hit record. And now that our tape deck is already plugged in directly to our computer, we're going to come over here to our tape deck. Make sure it is all the way rewinded, like I showed you. This already is rewinded, and we're just going to hit play. As you can see, that's turning. So, it is playing. And our computer is picking up signal. So, like I just showed you guys with the portable cassette player, you guys are going to want to make sure it does not clip too much. Now, it's alright if it goes up there sometimes, but 
it is very, very bad if it goes up there all the time just like this. Like, you do not want it to be up there like this. That's not good, you know? You guys want it to be, you know, quiet at some points and then loud when it needs to be um, loud, of course. So we're going to come down here to, to when it looks good. Just want to give you guys an example so you guys know what to look for when you're recording. Mm. I think for this cassette, 23 will do just fine. So like I said, you're going to want to make it look like this so it's not up there all the time. If it hits zero once in a while, that's all right. You know, that's, it's just natural, but you do not want it to hit zero all the time. Um, you know, you want it to hit just when it has to. So that's what you should really, really be looking, you know, at when you're recording. Don't want that. I'm just going to hit the X if you ever do that on accident. You don't need that dialog box. Just going to hit the X here. I'm going to show you guys what I just recorded. This is what I, you know, I said is bad. Um, you do not want to get this. You guys want to have this. When You, you guys want to be looking, you know, like this. When you record off of your cassette tapes, you want it to look like this. You don't want it to be clipping at the top. So I'm going to give you guys an example of both. And I can't play this for too long because, you know, I do not own this content. But I want to give you guys an example. So um, let me play this real quick. Alright, so you don't want it to sound like that. You don't want it to sound really, really loud all the time. You want it to be loud when it has to be loud. So, we're going to come back over here to play. And now I'm playing it right there. Right in front of where I started um, recording it right. So, Alright, so you want it to sound more like this. I think this is where I turned it up a little bit. But, you know, this will be fine too. And like I said, that's the police. Um, now, you know, that's, that's how you're going to want to have to do it. Now, I'm going to record for a little while so I, could, I can show you guys how to put it on CD. And then, um, you know, ultimately to your iPod. So, um, I'll be right back after I'm done recording a little bit. Alright, guys, I'm back. Um, and I recorded the album, Pol The Police, Every Breath You Take. The singles, that's the cover. Um, and this is the first two songs, um, Roxane and Can't Stand Losing You. So those are the first two songs. I'm going to show you guys how to, um, you know, record and then ultimately put on your um, CD. Um, or you can put them on your iPod. Now, um, now this is how you're going to want it to look. You know, when you have your finished product after you've recorded your first side of the um, cassette tape, like, obviously, you're, you're going to record the whole first side of your cassette tape. Don't do one song at a time. Please don't do that. Um, do the whole side, and then you're going to edit it, you know, so you, you'll have it all in front of you. You don't have to come back and keep hitting play, stop, play, stop. You know, that's going to really get, you know, repetitive. So I, you know, encourage you guys to just record the whole, you know, first side of the tape. And then after you're done with that, you guys can record the second t side of the tape and then edit all that. And then, you know, I'll show you guys how to do that. But ultimately, you know, this is how you're going to want it to look when you have your product, you know, right in front of you. So, you know, you, do, you guys do not want it to look like this. And I'm going to show you guys an example of what you guys do not want it to look like. So you guys do not want it to look like this. As you can see, it's clipping the top and you do, you do not want it to be like that because it will be distorted. It will be really, really distorted and it will not sound good. You guys want it to look like this. For sure you guys want it to look like this. I'm telling you guys, you know, from my experience, I figured out how to do this all myself. Nobody told me, taught me how to. You know, I did this all myself. And to be honest with you, you guys seriously have a low battery here. It's unfortunate. Anyway, should have plugged it in. But... You guys want it to look like this. Now, Tori, before my battery dies, <laughs> we're going to um, copy this first song, and that's Roxane off of the album The Police, Every Breath You Take. The second song will be Can't Stand Losing You. But we're just going to copy this. Copy. Then we're going to open in a new file. So we're going to hit New File, and then hit OK. Then we're going to Paste. Now you can maximize that if you wish. 
then zoom out using this in the corner it's the bottom right hand corner don't know if you can see that but I'm just gonna move that out you know just so you guys know where it is so if it pops up looking like that you know you guys know what to do so you're gonna hit save file now you can save this as multiple files you know most of these you, you guys are never gonna use anyway um, so the ones you guys are gonna be want to be um, you know focused on are the wave file and the mp3 now I'm gonna show you guys the mp3 file first so it's gonna hit Roxane it's called Roxane it was overwrite what I already have. It's fine. 320. So you're gonna, you guys are going to want it to say 320 kilobytes per second. And then you guys want to make, make it say stereo. Do not make sure this does not say mono. Because when I first opened this up, it said mono. So do not have it at mono. It will sound, it will sound good, but it won't sound as good as stereo, of course. Uh, mono and stereo, that's a completely different topic. But you guys are going to want to hit OK after you're done hitting stereo. It'll save your file into your hard drive, and boom, Roxane song number one is done. So we're going to come back in here, and then right away we're just going to hit delete. So we know that we're done with Roxane, and we need to move on to the next song. So let's say that this is the second song, you know, you would just keep going, you know, just keep, you know, copying and pasting these into new files. Just keep hitting new file up here. And then just keep copying, pasting these. But this is the last song, you know, in this scenario. I only recorded two of them. Um, but at the last song, you guys are going to come up and say, File. And then Save File As. So this one, I'm going to show you guys how to do a WAV file. So this song is called uh, Can't Stand Losing You. We'll overwrite what I already have. Now you have this dialog box pop up. Now you guys are going to want to make sure you have it saying exactly this. PCM uncompressed. And then you guys are going to want to look through this huge list. I know it's a pretty large list. But you guys are going to want to search for 44,100 hertz, 16 bits stereo. That's exactly what you guys are going to want to find. You know, because if you do it any higher than that, it will not play on any iPod. Um, and the highest, you know, an iPod can take is going to be... Um, 44,000 hertz, 16 bits, and stereo. Obviously, you can go a lot higher than that. I think it goes all the way up to um, 36 bits. If I'm no, 32 bits actually it goes all the way up to 32 bits at the bottom there. But you guys are gonna use exactly this because if you don't use this, it won't play on your iPod. It's as simple as that. It's easy as that. So use exactly this and make it say exactly this. Then gonna hit OK. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to put this on your iPod and ultimately your MP3 player, iPod, you know, CDs or whatever you're going to be using them for. Um, I don't know, but I'm going to show you both when I come back. All right, guys, so we have our two files, Can't Stand Losing You and Roxane. So all we're going to do is drag and drop both of these files into our iTunes window. I've already done that, so, you know, we're not going to go there. But just know that you're going to drag and drop those into your iTunes window. Obviously, if you have more songs on your album, which you most likely will. Um, I only recorded the first two songs off of this album. Um, but, you know, just copy and paste both of them or drag and drop them into your iTunes window. Now I come up here to w Music. Um, I know this is an older version of iTunes. Um, but, you know, they'll both work ex pretty much exactly the same way. Um, I know the newer version looks a little different, but um, here we have Roxane, and then here I just put Can't Stand Losing You in this folder right here, or an album, imaginary album, there's no album called Ace Tech HD by the way, um, but <laughs> I'm going to hit Get Info, as you can see the name of the song is Can't Stand Losing You, you're going to type in The Police, you know, genre would be rock or pop. Um, year, what's the year on this cassette? 1981. So, you know, you're going to type that in there, and boom, you're done. You know, to get your um, album artwork, you're just going to right-click, and then get album artwork. It will fetch it from iTunes, um, if you named it the correct thing. Obviously, if you 
named it something completely different it's not going to get the album artwork for you you're going to have to go on itunes and find you know what the album is called and then type it in here um and then boom you know you guys are going to be able to get your artwork too so you know obviously after it's on itunes you're you know easily going to be able to um put it on your ipod your ipad your iphone um you know just has to be on your itunes um library which you know as you can see it's on my itunes library now whether it's a um wav file or a um mp3 file it will matter because it will be a bigger file as you can see this is a wave file this is 28 megabytes then now see how big our other file is going back here sorry for showing you guys a white screen there going to rock saying this is the mp3 file i recorded for you guys so get info as you can see it's only seven megs so the difference you know is pretty big and this song is three minutes and the other one is mystery time this is two minute song so you know this one is bigger than you know um our longer song but the difference the only difference is that they're you know obviously two different songs and you know they're different formats you know this is mp3 and this is a um, um wave file so you know obviously if you're using an iphone or an ipod um you know touch usually you know they come in like eight gig increments you know if you have like an ipod classic and it you know you have like a uh, 160 gigs of space you guys can use obviously by any means use your um you know um wave file this is the wave file actually um, use your wave file, but if you're going to be using an 8 gig iPod Touch or something lower, you know, I know they made like four or five, you know, four or five gigs and six gigs, um, you know, iPod Nanos and stuff. So, um, you know, obviously you're, you're going to want to use an MP3 if you're going to be using those kind of things. Now, um, to put them on a CD, um, you guys are just going to make a new playlist. So, it's going to hit, actually, it's actually down here on this version of iTunes new playlist call that anything you want just randomly type in something so and then you're just gonna drag and drop song you want so Roxane we want that in our blah 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 playlist and boom it's in there so it's gonna right click your playlist over here and a cool thing iTunes lets you burn the playlist to your disk so if I had a, a blank disk in there um, it would burn you know easily so that's how you put it on CD. You know, hope you guys enjoyed. I know it was really scattered and all over the place. Um, but I tried my best. Seriously, I've been having really bad luck with these videos so far. I swear I tried it so many times and I've been sitting here for a little while um, trying to get it right. And this is the best I've got it, you know, so far. So I'm going to keep this version. Anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. Check out some of my other videos. You know, they're a lot better than this one. This one was just kind of, I don't know what happened. You know, I'm going to do another one of these. Um, not, you know, obviously on cassette tapes. I'm not going to, you know, redo this exact topic. But I will do vinyl records. And, you know, the process is pretty much exactly the same. So, you know, please, you know, do try to come back. You know, subscribe and maybe you'll catch that video. You know, because I do plan on making better videos. This one was just kind of... I'm just trying to get this out there. I don't have a ton of time right now. I have some stuff to do I'm around the house. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. This has been HTechHD, and I am out.